What is going on everyone? Welcome back to World According to Briggs and a look at the Big Easy, New Orleans. In case you don't know, New Orleans is right here in the state of Louisiana, not too far from the border of Mississippi, where the Mississippi River and the Gulf of Mexico meet. New Orleans is best known for Mardi Gras and the French Quarter, but there is so much more to this city with history and culture around every corner. Let's take a look. The landmass that would become the city of New Orleans was formed around 2200 BC when the Mississippi River deposited sand and silt creating a delta region. Before Europeans colonized the settlement, the area was inhabited by Native Americans for at least 1300 years. Now this city's been around a long time. It was actually founded in 1718 by French colonists. They celebrate this on May 7th, but the actual date is really unknown. They just know it was around 1718. At first the community was a trading camp before being transferred into a rectangle and fortified community, which is now known as the French Quarter. The French Quarter is where Bourbon Street is and where most of the Mardi Gras stuff goes on. And that's what most people that have never visited New Orleans or don't know much about New Orleans, they think that's what the city is, just the French Quarter. That's all they know. There's so much to this city. New Orleans has changed hands a few times. First, it was in French control. And then after the Seven Years' War with Britain, they lost control of it and it was given to the Spanish. That was in the 1760s. When the Spanish governor showed up to take control of New Orleans, the German and French settlers chased him out of town in a bloodless rebellion. At least it was bloodless for a while because the Spanish returned and executed the ringleaders of this rebellion. During the American Revolution, it was an important hub of transportation for the American revolutionaries. A lot of stuff was smuggled up the Mississippi River to arm and supply the American revolutionaries. New Orleans remained under Spanish control until 1803 when it reverted briefly to French rule. Nearly all of the 18th century buildings of the French Quarter are still standing, dating back to the Spanish period. Eventually, the United States took over New Orleans as part of the Louisiana Purchase. On January 8th, 1815, they had the Battle of New Orleans here. And this was all part of the War of 1812 against the British. General Andrew Jackson, along with the U.S. Navy, what there was of it, a bunch of militiamen, a bunch of farmers, some Kentucky frontiersmen, and a bunch of pirates defeated the British who were considered to be better trained and better equipped. Fun fact about that, the treaty that kind of would have ended things was signed on December 24th, 1814, just a couple weeks prior. But the forces there didn't know about it yet. Technically, they still could have, but there was a treaty and most militaries would kind of stand down while they work out all the finer details. But it wasn't ratified by both countries till February of 1815. This whole video could be done about the history of New Orleans, but we're going to move on. I'll talk about other things later on. When the Louisiana Purchase went down, there was roughly 13 to 15,000 people living in New Orleans. During the War of 1812, when they had that big battle with Andrew Jackson, the Battle of New Orleans, there was less than 25,000 people living there. And New Orleans continued to grow at least in double digit percentage points every single census until the 1970 census where they actually lost 5.4% of their population. And that trend continued until just this last census in 2020, where they gained again for the first time since the 1960 census, where they gained 11.7%. At the 2020 census, New Orleans had about 382,000 residents. The entire metro area has just under 1.3 million residents right now. So they might be on the upswing again. I say might because if another hurricane rips through there, they're going to start losing population again, just like they did in 2005 when Hurricane Katrina came through. That hurricane flooded 80% of the city and killed about 1,800 people. So many people were displaced that it caused a population decline of over 50%, and it caused about $125 billion in damages. New Orleans began as a trading post and a smuggling operation, apparently, with pirates and everything. These days, it's still a crucial transportation hub and distribution center for waterborne commerce, as they say. No pirates anymore. At least I hope not. I mean, we still have pirates in the world, but they're no fun. Not like the old pirates where they're making people walk the plank and carrying swords and eye patches and peg legs. That's no fun. No one flies the Jolly Roger anymore. This new generation of pirates just don't honor the old traditions of pirating. I would be curious to find out when the last time a ship was boarded 
by a guy with a peg leg and maybe a hook for a hand. New Orleans operates one of the world's largest and busiest ports. It accounts for a significant portion of the nation's oil and petrochemical production. But the port itself is the fifth largest in the U.S. based on cargo volume, 12th largest in the U.S. on cargo value. Yes, there's a difference. Tourism plays a major role in the city's economy, accounting for $5.5 billion during normal times. I don't know what it's been during the pandemic. Uh, I'm sure the number's a little skewed, but normally it's around $5.5 billion. Now, there's a lot of major companies that are headquartered in New Orleans. I'll tell you what was there at the end of 2021. I did one of these videos about Los Angeles and like, I think it was not Los Angeles, but it's like two of the companies left in the six months since I did that video. So you got companies like Rolls-Royce, AT&T, IBM, Harrah's Entertainment, Capital One, Popeye's Chicken. Those all have some sort of headquarters there. It may not be their major headquarters. It's a lot of companies will have like their North American headquarters and then their other one in Europe, whatever. Federal agencies also employ a lot of the New Orleans residents along with some military facilities in the area. For a long time, there was like zero jobs in New Orleans. I mean, all the ones they had were taken and they weren't really filling any positions. But in the last few years, that's kind of turned around. And I think that plays a big role. It normally does in why people are moving back to New Orleans, why their population is growing again. Now we get to neighborhoods and I always have to give this disclaimer. When we look at the neighborhoods, we go by a livability score. Is this the absolute best neighborhood according to the locals? Not normally. Is it the absolute worst neighborhood according to the locals? Not normally either. We just go by the stats to kind of give people an idea of what they're looking at. The reason we go by the stat is because everyone has their own opinion on what's the worst, what's the best. And you could ask a hundred different New Orleans residents and they'll give you a hundred different answers on what's the best, what's the worst, things like that. We also use the actual name that a realtor might know the neighborhood by, or you could find on Google Maps because people watching this video, they're learning about New Orleans. They're not from New Orleans, so they want to be able to find it on a map. All right, here we go. One of the best neighborhoods in New Orleans is called Old Aurora. Old Aurora is in the Algiers area of New Orleans, which is on the west side of the Mississippi River. And this is not a bad place to live. Old Aurora has two things that normally indicate that a neighborhood is really, really nice. The first one is always waterfront property, and they have it. The Mississippi River flows right across Old Aurora, and they have golf courses in the area. I don't play golf, so I don't care, but in all my research, I've always found golf courses surround the nicer neighborhoods in any city. I shouldn't say any city. City. You have places like New York City where it's too crowded to really have golf courses around their nicer neighborhoods, but you get the idea. You'll also find Holy Cross University in this neighborhood. The stats here are excellent. They have a livability score of 85. Their crime rate is 59% lower than New Orleans average, and the cost of living is 6% lower than New Orleans average. So it's safe and it's cheap. How does that happen? Real estate prices are 24% lower than New Orleans average, and the median household income is about $57,000, which is 3% higher than the national income. That's a whole bunch of numbers, but here's the main one. The median home value here is $148,000. That's about 19% lower than the national average, and it's safe. When you get to the worst neighborhoods in New Orleans, one of the absolute worst is Central City in New Orleans. That is just west of the French Quarter. It's not a place you want to live. They've got a livability score of 57. Their crime rate is 404% higher than the national average, and that's 207% higher than New Orleans average. They are knocking it out of the park when it comes to crime. And to take it a step further, their violent crime rate is 653% higher than the national average. You have a one in six chance of becoming the victim of a crime while you're staying in this area. But they do have a low cost of living that's actually 27% lower than New Orleans average. And their medium household income, almost 15 thousand dollars that's 73 percent lower than the national average i'd tell you about houses but there's nothing here to talk about no i wouldn't move here i mean they do have some homes for about hundred nine thousand dollars that they'll probably let you have for a hundred four thousand but that means you got to remove the boarded up windows and any bodies that may have expired inside sadly almost fourteen thousand people call this neighborhood home When it comes to the stats that people look up when they're thinking about moving to a place, this is what they're looking at. Crime rate, cost of living, and the typical home price. The crime rate in New Orleans is 159% higher than the national average, and their violent crime rate is 2% higher than the national average. Property crime is 151% higher than the national average. So you're going to get your stuff stolen or you're going to get damaged if you live here long enough. You have a 1 in 16 chance of becoming the victim of a crime throughout New Orleans, and their year-over-year -year crime rate has risen by 13%. 
Their cost of living isn't horrible. It's actually 11% higher than the state average, and it's only 1% higher than the national average. This is a major city, and major cities are usually 30, 40, 50, up to 100% higher than the national average. Their housing is 4% higher than the national average. Again, it can go much higher for a major city. And their typical home price here is about $350,000 for a three-bedroom, two-bath, roughly 1,500 square feet. And it is a major city, so those prices go way up, or you got some neighborhoods like we just talked about, Central City, that go a lot lower. Now, in the times I've gone to New Orleans, about five of the places that I've eaten at are no longer in existence. So I'd like to tell you about them, but they're not there. So what's the point? One place that is still in existence that I love is McCarty's Chicken and Fixins. This place has been around since I'd say 2000. Got great chicken and mac and cheese. Really good mac and cheese. I was hungry and been drinking with some friends most of the day. I don't know if that played part in it, but this was really good mac and cheese. I reached out to one of our subscribers that I'm friendly with and asked them what's the best place they like to eat in New Orleans and they told me about a place called Piece of Meat. You can get everything from steaks, chops, ribs, brisket, everything. I'm going to eat there next time I go. But if you're visiting New Orleans, you got to get some gumbo. Creole food's really good. Po' boys, jambalaya, red beans and rice. New Orleans is a foodie paradise. I just haven't had a bunch of experience there with the food, at least not in recent years. So I feel I got to kind of skip this one a little bit. When it comes to tourism in New Orleans, you have to go to the French Quarter. That's just like required. If you go to New Orleans and don't stop by the French Quarter, you've done yourself a disservice. Most everything tourism centers around the French Quarter and Bourbon Street, whether it's Mardi Gras or like voodoo tours they have there. They have a 101 different types of tours there. You could just pick one and have a great time. The French Quarter just isn't for Mardi Gras and drinking and all that stuff. It's the architecture, the history, the dining options. In my opinion, though, during festival, the Mardi Gras Festival, it gets a little too crowded. And if you're not 21 to, let's say, 30, it might be a little too much for you. They also have the National World War II Museum. The museum is divided into three sections. The first section is devoted to the war in the Pacific. Another one is war in Europe. And then the other section is aircraft of World War II. I thought that was really interesting. You also have the St. Louis Cathedral, which was built in 1794. It's known as the United States' oldest cathedral that's had continuous use. When it comes to New Orleans sports, you've got two main ones. You've got the New Orleans Saints, American Football Team, National Football League. They're great. Go to the Superdome, see a game there. It's like a party. Every single season, doesn't matter if they're doing good, doesn't matter if they're doing bad, these people will throw a party in the stands. Then you have the New Orleans Pelicans in the NBA. They do okay. I mean, they're all right. I'm not a big basketball guy, but Pelicans are in the NBA. In New Orleans, they used to be the Charlotte Hornets, but apparently nobody liked the owner, so nobody came to the games. So he moved it to New Orleans. For a while there, they had to go to Oklahoma City and play for two years because of damage that was done to their arena during Hurricane Katrina. They also have a rugby team called the New Orleans gold. They have the New Orleans Hurricanes, which is in the Women's Football Alliance. And coming up this year, the Breakers are coming back in the USFL. The USFL was big in the 80s, then they shut down, and now they're coming back. And the Breakers was one of the teams they had way back then. Well, now they're starting it up in New Orleans again. Back in the 80s, when the Breakers were in the USFL were a thing, they were in Boston for a while, then they moved to Portland, Oregon. But we'll see if they last longer than the USFL did last time. When it comes to famous people, New Orleans has a lot to choose from. And no matter who I say, I'm going to get some uh, comments about how come I didn't mention such and such. But you got people like Bryant Gumbel, the sportscaster, television personality, Richard Simmons, Lee Harvey Oswald, shot Kennedy. Yeah, he's from New Orleans. The old school musician and trumpet player, band leader, Louis Prima. I always get a hard time because I don't mention any rappers or anything like that. It's just not something I know much about, so I usually don't. But I go through the list of famous rappers from a place now and I pick one that has a little like L-I-L at the beginning of their name and I just grab one and actually one I've heard of Lil Wayne's from New Orleans his real name is Dwayne Michael Carter Jr. and when it comes to jazz players and instruments they play I could do an hour-long video on just these people alone there's so many different jazz singers jazz musicians jazz drummers it's an insane amount I'd encourage you to go back to the like Wikipedia page and just look at all of them when it comes to sports one of the greatest running backs of all time time, Marshall Falk is from New Orleans. The great receiver from the Indianapolis Colts, Reggie Wayne, was born in New Orleans. 
So in conclusion, I think New Orleans is one of the best cities to visit in the United States. Living there, uh, that's a little sketchy. I mean, they got a little more crime than I'd like in a city I'd move to. The people 90% of the time are wonderful. It's just another one of those places where you got 10% of the population working overtime to bring a city down. You will find great food, Southern hospitality, and things to see in New Orleans. But for someone like me, the crime rate, the humidity and the heat of the summer and the possibility of a hurricane happening there again is what would make me not move there. All right, everyone, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.